Hello, this is Jeremy Zimmerman, and today we'll be talking about the Bravi lattices and crystal families. This video introduces translation vectors, crystal systems, and Bravi lattices in both two and three dimensions. The reason we do this is that every crystalline material can be described by a crystal system and a Bravi lattice. After this video, you will know the four crystal systems in two dimensions and the five Bravi nets in two dimensions. We will also discuss how we came up with these and why there are not more or fewer of each of these ideas. We will then extend these into three dimensions and we'll discuss the seven crystal systems in three dimensions and the 14 Bravi lattices in three dimensions. Finally, we will discuss conventions for choosing the best lattice. First, we'll start out with the definition of a net. A net is an infinite array of points that can be reached by repeating a set of translation vectors in two dimensions. A lattice is the same thing, but in three dimensions. Um, you may note that many people use, will use lattice for two dimensions as well as three dimensions. So below we have an oblique net and we can reach any point by repeating the translation vectors T1 and T2. I will be able to get to any point by going T1 plus T2 plus T1 plus T2 plus T1 plus T1 and so forth. So we can reach any of these going in the forward direction. We could also go in the backward direction to get to other points. Any two-dimensional net can be described using the oblique net, which has translation vectors of T1 equals A and T2 equals B, and some angle between them gamma. There are, however, four special cases, and these occur when the angle is between A and B is 90 degrees. When A equals B, we have several other special cases. The angle between the vectors can be an arbitrary angle, gamma, or it can be 90 or 120 degrees. One thing to note is that in real crystals, if the angle is not 90 or 120 degrees, it will be an irrational number. We will call this shape that I'm shown below a unit mesh. Um, in three dimensions, it'll be a unit cell. People often use the word unit cell in two dimensions as well. So in two dimensions, we have the five Bravi nets, the oblique net, the rectangular net, the rhombic net, the square net, and the hexagonal net. I've highlighted the rhombic net in red because this is not an official name, and I want to talk about this in more details now. Here, I have taken the rhombic net at the upper left, and I have rotated it a bit, and I've repeated it throughout space. Here you can see all of the rhombic uh, unit meshes tiled together. This is a perfectly acceptable way of describing this net, but it hides some of the high symmetry features. Because people are really bad about thinking about non 90 degree angles, we draw we can draw this as a rec, as this red rectangle. And this also describes the net, but it has the advantage of using a 90 degree angle and we'll have two different lengths A and B. The other advantage is that some other symmetry elements become more obvious. For example, each of the dotted red lines is a mirror plane, and there are a lot of twofold rotational symmetries that just aren't quite obvious when you use the rhombic lattice. So we call this the centered rectangular net. In two dimensions, this is unique in that it is the only Bravi net that has two net points per unit mesh have one point at the origin here and we'll use this we'll describe this using fractional coordinates of zero zero and there's a second lattice or net point at the center here and this is described as being at point one half one half i'm coming back to the five two-dimensional bravi nets i'm going to replace this oblique lattice in the center with their centered rectangular we now have the five Bravi nets, oblique, primitive rectangular, centered rectangular, square, and hexagonal. All of them, unless noted as centered, are primitive, and you may also hear them called simple. Each of the Bravi nets is a member of a slightly more general categorization called the crystal system. 
The oblique square and hexagonal are the only members of their respective crystal systems, but the rectangular crystal system has two members, the primitive and centered variants. The international symbols shown in the left-hand column are a little confusing. They'll be a little easier to understand after we talk about the parent systems for each of these nets in three dimensions. So the parent crystal system for the oblique cell is the monoclinic cell. When you go and look at the monoclinic cell later on in this video, if you were to set the C direction equal to zero, you would get the oblique net. That's what we've done in each of these cases. And that, again, gives you the first letter in the international symbol. The second letter in two dimensions is always lowercase, and it is either P for primitive or C for centered. I would now like to talk about how you pick the best bravi net. And the way we do this is we make the highest symmetry obvious. We're going to talk about symmetry at greater length later on in the course, but for now, just think about simple symmetries like can the lattice points be mirrored across a line, or can you pick the lattice or net up and rotate it about a point without changing the appearance of the net? To pick the best Brave net, we start by looking for lattice vectors that are equal. If A and B are equal, we have two possibilities. The angle between A and B, gamma, can be 120 degrees, which will give you a hexagonal net. And this indicates that you have threefold or sixfold rotational symmetry. If the angle between A and A, and a is 90 degrees, we will get a square net, and this has fourfold rotational symmetry. If A does not equal B and gamma is 90 degrees, we get the rectangular net. We frequently have twofold rotational symmetry, and mirrors or glides are often present. The other option is for gamma to be unequal to 90 degrees, and this is our oblique net, and this might have twofold rotational symmetry. Um, when we're picking the best oblique net, we want to make sure we pick the shortest possible net vectors. Crystal systems and Bravi lattices in three dimensions are much more complex than in two dimensions because we have three translation vectors, A, B, and C, and there will be three angles describing how they're related to each other. The lowest symmetry system is the triclinic system. This is also called the anorthic system, and this is denoted with the letters A, B, C, alpha, beta, gamma, in the curly brackets. The angle alpha is opposite the lattice direction A, and it is between the, the lattice translation vectors B and C, and similar rules apply for, for beta and gamma. The next lowest symmetry system is the monoclinic system, and here we have A, B, and C unequal. Uh, alpha and gamma are 90 degrees, but beta is some irrational number, typically larger than 90 degrees. Next up in our categorization is the orthorhombic cell. Here, A, B, and C are unequal, but all the angles are 90 degrees. Moving up in symmetry a little bit more, we have the tetragonal unit cell, where A and B are equal, and, but they are unequal to C, and all of the angles are 90 degrees. We can also have A and B equal to each other, but unequal to C, but we can have one of the angles in the gamma position as being 120 degrees, and this will give us a hexagonal crystal system. Next, we have rhombohedral, which has the lattice translation vectors A, B, and C being equal to each other, and alpha, beta, and gamma also being equal to each other. This is technically a subset of the trigonal system. Finally, we have the cubic unit cell, which has A, B, and C equal, and all of the angles 90 degrees. There are 14 Bravi lattices in three dimensions. First, we have the triclinic cell, which is given by A for anorthic and a capital P for three-dimensional primitive. The monoclinic crystal family has two members, and that is the primitive with a single lattice point per unit cell, and the C face centered Bravi lattice. This capital C does not stand for centered, it stands for the C face. The orthorhombic crystal family has four members the primitive cell, 
the C face centered cell, the I centered cell, and that is the inner centered. And uh, finally, we have the face centered orthorhombic cell. And this has an extra lattice point on the center of every face of the unit cell. The type dragonal crystal family has two bravi lattice members, the primitive and the body centered version. Hexagonal only has one. The rhombohedral cell is given the international symbol of R. Um, you may see it denoted as HR, and this arises because you could draw the unit cell as being a hexagonal cell with three lattice points per unit cell. Finally, we have the cubic unit cell, and that can be primitive, body-centered, or face-centered. How do we pick the best lattice? We go through the same process. First, we look for all lattice translation vectors being equal. So A equals B equals C. The highest symmetry option is going to be if all of the angles are 90 degrees. Um, we're going to write this as AAA 90, 90, 90, and this is our cubic unit cell. The cubic structures have multiple three-fold type symmetries, multiple two-fold type symmetries, and there's a high probability that you'll see a four-fold type symmetry in there as well. If alpha, beta, and gamma are equal, but not equal to 90 degrees, uh, they form something called the rhombohedral unit cell. If you find an alpha of 109.5 or 60 degrees, you could redraw that as a cubic cell. So uh, be careful with that. But the rhombohedral cell only has a threefold type symmetry. Next up in our hierarchy is we'll set A and B equal to each other, but they'll be unequal to C. If the angle between A and B is 120 degrees, we have a hexagonal unit cell, and this will have either threefold or sixfold type symmetry. If all of the angles are 90 degrees, this gives us the tetragonal unit cell, and this will have fourfold type symmetries. Finally, we have A unequal to B unequal to C. The first option here is for all the angles to be 90 degrees, and this will give us the orthorhombic unit cell. This will have either twofold or multiple mirror symmetries. If alpha and gamma are 90 degrees, but beta is not 90 degrees, and it will not be 120 degrees either. This will be an irrational number in a real crystal. This will be the monoclinic cell, and this typically has twofold or mirror symmetries. Finally, if none of the angles are 90 or 120 degrees, uh, we get the triclinic cell, which has one-fold type symmetries. So I have some things I'd like you to think about. Make sure you know what is used to transform a single point into a net or a lattice. How many net points should the unit mesh or unit cell in a two-dimensional system contain? How many atoms should the unit mesh in a two-dimensional crystal structure contain? Finally, I want you to explain why adding an additional lattice point midway along the base, let's just say the A side of a two-dimensional net, never creates a new bravi net. Thanks for listening.